The story opens with Anna staying with her sister and F. Josie picks her for a conversation about the significance of art and Anna's dreams of launching her own art gallery. However, Ronnie cuts in dismissing her art aspirations as impractical, pointing out her arts degree and modest gallery job aren't paving the way to financial stability. He highlights the high cost of living in New York, a challenge common among her peers. Ronnie expresses discomfort with Anna's presence at home and suggests she find a new place. Anna, taken aback, apologizes for any inconvenience caused. You know, New York is expensive and my credit is shit. I promise I'll be out of here soon. Yeah. Anna knows she has to pass by Ronnie's house en route to the gallery, which is hosting a significant auction selling paintings worth $100,000. Claire, the gallery director, emphasizes the day's importance, insisting on perfection. She reprimands Anna for her stained attire, assigning her to welcome guests and hand out catalogs instead. You two will be in charge of something where you're less visible. Right. After completing her task, Anna vents to a colleague about her struggles and ambition to open her gallery despite obstacles. While browsing a catalog, Anna spots a mislabeling of a painting's medium and promptly informs Claire, who corrects the error before the auction begins. There's been a mistake in the catalog. Item number 17 is mislabeled. It should say acrylic on what Claire later commends Anna for her attentiveness, marking a rare moment of acknowledgement. That evening, Anna overhears her sister and brother-in-law derogatorily referring to her but remains unfazed. The next day, Anna receives an unexpected call from Kabir, inviting her to London to assist with another auction. Thrilled and disbelieving, she inquires about the departure time. Learning she has just two hours, Anna rushes to pack. Her departure is met with relief and assistance from her sister's family, highlighting their eagerness for her to leave. Upon arriving at the airport, Anna is taken aback to find that Rini, a professor, and the two colleagues she least gets along with at work, who often treat her condescendingly due to their higher rank, will be accompanying her. They even go as far as to demand Anna's help with their luggage. Overhearing their conversation, Anna discovers they won't be sharing the same flight as they booked the last two business class seats for themselves, leaving Anna in economy. Frustrated and feeling demeaned by their actions, her mood lifts when an empathetic airport employee, noticing the situation, upgrades Anna to business class due to available extra seats. Thank you so much. I, I don't even know what to say. Just got upgraded. <laughs> While waiting for her flight, Anna engages in airport activities but is interrupted by a work-related call from London, which agitates her. Amidst her distress, she accidentally spills juice on a young man, apologizing profusely as he walks away unfazed. Later, boarding the plane and delighting in her unexpected business class seat, Anna is astonished to find the juice-stained young man seated beside her. Attempting to keep a low profile to avoid further embarrassment, her efforts prove unnecessary when the young man reassures her of his indifference towards the accident. Introducing himself as Feast, a prominent figure in the cup and marketing industries worldwide, he inquires about Anna's reason for traveling to London. She explains her involvement in the art field and her work-related journey. Curious, Anna asks Feast about his trip's purpose, learning he's visiting London to celebrate his mother's birthday. As their flight progresses towards London, the unexpected encounter paves the way for a new acquaintance, potentially influencing Anna's trip in unforeseen ways. Upon their arrival, Katzra joyfully greets her son William and soon inquires about Anna, whom William mentions he met on the plane. Intrigued by Anna's story and personality, Katzra expresses interest in her whereabouts. William reveals that Anna was headed to a hotel, and generously, they offer Anna a lift, conveniently aligning with her route. Anna, without hesitation and appreciating the gesture over her initial taxi plan, accepts their offer. During the ride, Anna and Kazra delve into a conversation about their professions. Kazra shares her past as a renowned figure in the advertising world, highlighting her fame during her youth. William observes the similarities between the two women, noting their shared connection to the arts. Upon reaching the hotel, William seizes the moment to invite Anna for a city tour. Anna, however, declines due to her pack schedule but is interrupted by Kasra, who requests Anna's phone number for future contact. Gratefully, Anna provides her number, thanks them for the ride, and bids them goodbye as she enters the hotel. Anna is taken aback by the luxury of her hotel room, initially assuming a mistake since it contrasts with the modest accommodation she had booked for herself. Her surprise deepens when Kelly informs her of an unexpected change, Kelly is off to Rome for the day, leaving Anna in charge of the auction preparations with the help of Renu Suzette. Kelly entrusts Anna with a comprehensive catalog of the artworks to be auctioned, emphasizing the importance of verifying each piece's authenticity and price. This responsibility marks a significant step in Anna's involvement in the art world, 
challenging her to navigate the intricacies of auction management. Rena Suzette informs Anna about a staff meeting happening in 15 minutes, emphasizing the importance of attentiveness and silence during the meeting. At the meeting, they are introduced to Arnold, the director of the gallery's second branch in London. The meeting brings a surprise revelation from Hope, announcing that the auction will feature a collection known as the Melting Pot, comprising some of the most significant and expensive profile paintings globally. Sakes, Arnold, please, what is it? It's the Proville Collection. These pieces, not seen at auctions for years, are available because their owner recently passed away, and his widow has requested the auction. Arnold stresses the importance of flawless execution, as the auction will attract some of the wealthiest and most influential individuals worldwide. After the meeting, Anna finds her office in a stark contrast to Renews, characterized by its aged and worn appearance. Shortly after, she receives a voice message from Kazra, informing her of a forgotten laptop in Kazra's car and extending an invitation to her birthday party. Grateful for the party invitation but intent on not imposing, Anna insists on retrieving her laptop without attending the party. However, Kazra insists on Anna's presence at her birthday celebration. At the party, William introduces Anna to Julia Mark, a friend of Kazra's, leaving Anna astonished to be in the presence of one of the world's most renowned artists. This encounter underscores the unexpected turns Anna's journey takes, weaving her deeper into the fabric of the art world and its distinguished circles. Anna expresses her admiration for Julia Mark's artistic works during their conversation. Shortly after, she receives a call from CLA, who tasks her with securing two tickets for a Shakespeare play for an important client, urging Anna to accomplish this by any means necessary. Anna approaches Julian, hoping he might assist in acquiring the tickets. Interrupting the discussion, Julian assures her that the tickets will be available the next morning. During her visit with Kazra, Anna is astonished by the collection of original paintings in her home. Kazra reveals her history of being married three times, all to artists, and inquires about the auction house Anna is associated with. When Anna mentions the name Warren, Kazra is visibly surprised, realizing it's the same auction house handling her late husband's profile board collection. Uh, Irwin's? <sighs> Katzra offers Anna the opportunity to oversee the sale of these paintings in TLA stead, an offer Anna declines to avoid potential conflicts with TLA. Katzra then persuades Anna to attend the opening of her art gallery the following day, to which Anna agrees before departing. The next day, William messages Anna to meet him in a soccer field to hand over the Shakespeare play tickets. Upon arrival, Anna finds William coaching young children in soccer, a passion he pursues before his workday begins. Despite his invitation to lunch, Anna, citing busyness, collects the tickets and leaves. Don't come to the hotel. If I go, I will meet you there. Okay. Upon delivering the tickets to CLA, Anna receives commendation for her efficiency, with Keita Lay hinting at a forthcoming promotion. That evening, Anna attends the gallery opening, where the arrival of Kiala, Rene, and Suzette catches her off guard. Feeling overwhelmed and claiming fatigue from her travels, Anna swiftly exits the exhibition to avoid CLA. William follows, inquiring about her hasty departure. Anna mentions feeling tired, and William suggests spending the evening elsewhere. Agreeing to his proposal, Anna and William share a dinner, marking a pleasant end to an eventful day. After a night of drinking and dancing, William offers to drive Anna back to her hotel. Anxious about revealing the condition of her modest accommodation, Anna directs him to the upscale hotel Calais is staying at. Before entering, William confesses his love for Anna, filling her with joy yet fear of his reaction upon learning the truth about her. Okay. I should go up. Over the next few days, Anna and William's relationship deepens. William shares that Anna's humility despite her perceived wealth distinguishes her from others he has known, a quality he admires deeply. When Anna attempts to shift the conversation to William's future plans, he surprises her by announcing his intention to relocate his business to New York to be closer to her. At the auction house, Kelly praises Anna for her dedication, hinting at a forthcoming promotion. However, their conversation is interrupted by Hope, who shockingly decides to cancel the auction. This decision meets universal disapproval due to its significance to the gallery. William's unexpected arrival at the auction house leads to a private discussion outside, during which Anna vents her frustration about the cancellation. Misinterpreting her concern for exploitation, William ends their relationship and departs. Returning inside, Anna discovers her pictures plastered everywhere. Confronted by TLA, she admits to impersonating her and apologizes. Kale, unaccepting of the apology, terminates Anna's employment. Distraught, Anna finds solace in solitude, reflecting on her dismissal and the loss of her living arrangement due to her sister's new dog. 
In a turn of events, Anna confesses her deceit to Kazra, expecting reprimand. Instead, Katra admires Anna's audacity, revealing her own past of similar deceptions and clarifying that the auction cancellation was a strategic marketing ploy. Surprisingly, Katra demands Anna's reinstatement as the condition for not withdrawing her collection from the auction, a request Kiele obliges. The auction proceeds successfully, with Anna's efforts contributing to sales exceeding expectations. Despite her professional triumph, Anna's personal life suffers from William's absence. Six months later, at her art exhibition opening, Anna has achieved her dreams but misses William. Rejecting an invitation to celebrate post-exhibition, she is stunned by William's unexpected arrival, signifying his forgiveness and desire to support her on this significant day. The film concludes with Anna welcoming William into her life and new apartment, symbolizing their reconciliation and the start of a shared future, and the movie ends.